My name is Christina, but in Australia it became short into Tina. I came with my partner back in 2012. In our home country we were human rights activists and I guess too much active and visible, so we ended up under Australian protection here. When we came to Australia and it was time to decide, okay, what are we doing now? For some time I felt that I could not do any of human rights work um, again because there were two feelings. Um, there was a feeling of guilt, you know, before yourself that you've left for the LGBT community, that you did not stand to the end and, you know, you took the decision to leave the country. But also there was a shame, a shame for surviving when a lot of um, queer people who fought for their rights, um, they didn't. For me, being a queer refugee, I am in a very tricky situation. I cannot fit into the queer community because they've got no idea what to do with me as a refugee. I cannot fit in the refugee community because I'm queer and for some people it can be a little bit controversial. And at the same time, I cannot feel into my ethnic community, again, because I'm queer. It took me a long time to come to terms with those notions, but luckily I did and they brought me to doing my PhD. In my PhD, I'm looking into um, what does it mean to be a queer refugee woman so I'm looking into the live experiences of uh, myself and other women who are queer and come from refugee backgrounds trying to understand both our loss trauma and survival at the same time trying to understand what is our life and um, how can we leave it to the full potential without you know trying to fix ourselves in any ways I don't like to talk about my um, refugee past and um, I try to avoid telling that story to anyone but when that comes up in the conversation what I don't like is that it immediately reduces me to that singular identity. For many people, and fortunately for them, there is no real understanding of what violence means or persecution or any infringement of, of their body or rights because for many of those, it's a very abstract notion that I've got from movies, you know, or like media. But for many people from refugee backgrounds, these words actually have, you know, bodily reactions. People need to understand people from refugee backgrounds come with a massive trauma. And for many, they just don't want to talk about that. And questions like that, they will only trigger some memories. So I think that this realization of the the whole conversation really need to shift brought me to what I do now. Currently, I work at the Refugee Advice and Caspic Service, which is the longest running refugee legal center in New South Wales. And I'm really proud to be part of the team who brings real changes to people's lives. The other day, I came across a phrase um, that your home is where you stop running. So now living in Australia um, and calling this place my home, I really want to identify myself as Australian. I want to be able to function in a society on equal terms. I want to be able to say that I am Australian and no one will question that. Because um, sometimes when people ask me where I'm from and um, you know, I joke and I say I'm from Newtown, they're like, oh no, no, you don't understand my question, where are you from originally? I want to have a right to say that I'm Australian and I want people to respect um, that right to identify that way. I think people don't understand that for us who come from refugee background, there is no place anymore to identify with. The place that we left does not exist anymore in the same way that it did before. So I think that what we all need is, is a place that we can call home right now. I'm blessed to be partner of the project director. So she made me join this project, <laughs> joking. It started as autobiographical reflection of our journey. And the more we involved, the more we realized that in the current environment, we really need to give people hope. To people who, despite the odds and overcoming the most traumatic past, now need a future to believe in. I guess coming from peer perspective, we just want to say that, yes, it is really hard to rebuild your life again, but everyone has a strength to do it. Also with this project, we really want to shift the discussion towards the hope and strength and survival and stop parading victimhood and vulnerability of people from refugee backgrounds. We really want to celebrate their dignity.